Happy Friday, and from our sunny offices in downtown Seattle, welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week, and to sharing some practical tips along the way. As always, I'm your host and security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting June 3rd, 2013. Let's start this episode off with a story about malicious iPhone chargers. Black Hat's coming up, and the conference organizers have already released some information about all the briefings that they're going to have during this year's security conference. And one of those briefings described a new vulnerability that has to do with iPhone, or more specifically, iOS device chargers. A group of students or researchers from Georgia Tech figured out a vulnerability having to do with the iPhone charging system. Essentially, they used an embedded Linux system called BeagleBoard to create a malicious charger they call a MacTan. And by leveraging a vulnerability they'll disclose at this upcoming conference, they're able to use that to infect an iPhone within one minute of you plugging it into the charger. And this essentially allows them to load malicious code on an iPhone even if you haven't jailbroken it or done any sort of thing to root it. So obviously this is a very interesting topic that's going to be in an upcoming Black Hat presentation. Now obviously there's no real details yet, but I will be attending Black Hat so you can look forward to updates about this topic in the future. The next story involves what some people are calling the first ever OS X virus. Now you probably know the difference between a virus and a worm. A virus is considered the more old school malware that spreads itself by infecting other files on your computer. It doesn't spread via the network or necessarily via email or anything like that. Rather, once it's on one file on your computer, it starts to spread itself by loading itself into other binaries on your computer. Meanwhile, the more modern malware we see today is something called a worm which tries to spread over the internet or over networks. In any case, we've seen malware for Mac OS X before, but it's mostly Trojans that you have to install yourself, or in some cases a few worms, some Trojans that had some limited spreading capability. However, most claimed we'd never seen a OS X virus. Now that has changed. Basically, a security researcher talked about uh, reverse engineering a old 2006 uh, virus that he called caps lock techniques. Uh, and in any case, he found out that uh, this particular virus is also capable of spreading between 32-bit binaries on Mac OS X systems, specifically x86 OS X systems. And he released a big blog post detailing how this particular OS X virus works. The new name for it is kind of a take on the old caps lock name. He now calls it Clapzock A. But in any case, it really is just a proof of concept. I'm not worried about this particular virus spreading in the wild. In fact, this is just something he's been reversing uh, in his own labs. However, it's still interesting because many people still assume, many Mac fanboys, that OS X computers are immune to viruses. And that is not the case at all. We haven't seen many wild viruses against them, but they're not immune to them, and this proves it. That said, you don't have to be worried about it. It's not really spreading in the wild. Furthermore, it only infects the 32-bit uh, binaries, and nowadays, Line has moved to 64-bit. So while there's still a lot of 32-bit programs out there, uh, modern viruses are going to have to improve their infection techniques to, to handle modern operating systems. I don't want to spend much time on it because it's not really technically interesting, but this week brought us a lot more updates, including news of upcoming updates. So just so you are aware, one of the big updates this week is Google released Chrome 27. This fixed 12 new vulnerabilities in the well-known uh, web browser. So if you have Chrome, make sure it's set to auto-update, or at the very least, update it manually. Many of the vulnerabilities described in this new uh, update can actually be used in drive-by download attacks. Next up, ISC warned of a bind update that fixes a denial of service flaw in this popular DNS server. In fact, bind is the most popular DNS server out there. Now, typically, denial of service issues are not that worrisome compared to remote code execution anyways, but DNS is a key system that allows you to connect to the internet. So a denial of service flaw against your DNS server is a big deal. So if you use bind, make sure to check out these updates. 
Next, I also want to talk about a supposed zero-day vulnerability affecting a product called Plesk. If you're not a web hosting company, you may not have heard of Plesk. Plesk is a very popular uh, kind of control panel that web hosting companies can use to uh, pay attention to all the websites they host. In any case, King Cope, a very popular uh, researcher that posts to the full uh, disclosure mailing list, released details and proof of concept for a zero-day vulnerability affecting Plesk. Without going into a ton of technical details, essentially this vulnerability allows a remote attacker to inject PHP code that uh, this Plesk uh, web server or the, this Plesk control panel which runs on a web server would execute. So it's a pretty serious vulnerability. Now the good news is although this is a zero day flaw, it seems to only affect Plesk 9.5 and below. On top of that, it only affects Plesk if it's run in a certain configuration which some claim are, are not the default configuration. Nonetheless, if you are a web hosting company and you use Plesk, you should definitely make sure you're using above 9.5 and check out this particular vulnerability. And even if you aren't a web hosting company, if you host your website somewhere, especially if you know your web hosting company uses this control panel, you might want to point this flaw out to them to make sure they fix it as well. The final thing I want to talk about is a Microsoft Patch Day. It's coming up next week, the second Tuesday of the month, as usual. Uh, this week, Microsoft posted their advanced notification. And without going into all the details, there's going to be five bulletins, which is not that many compared to past releases. They're going to fix around 23 vulnerabilities in Windows, Office, Internet Explorer, and other products. And by far, the Internet Explorer update is the biggest thing you should focus on since it fixes 19 of those 23 vulnerabilities vulnerabilities. So look out for Microsoft Patch Day next week. Let's end with what I think is the biggest story this week, which is information about a new APT threat, which one of our security partners is calling NetTraveler. This week, uh, one of our AV partners, Kaspersky, released a big report talking about this NetTraveler APT. And this is a particular uh, attack that has some malware attached to it that seems to be targeting uh, government organizations, scientific organizations, Tibetan activists, embassies, uh, and oil and industrial facilities, and its goal seems to be stealing intellectual property. And by the way, most of the signs in this report suggest that it seems to be coming from a Chinese-based attacker. In any case, Net Traveler starts like a lot of APT attacks. It seems to use spear phishing, very targeted emails, and these emails contain Word documents. And of course, if you open these Word documents, they leverage two very popular vulnerabilities in old versions of Word to take over your computer and install some malware on it. Now, these are not zero-day vulnerabilities. These are old Word vulnerabilities that are patched. So if you're up to date with Office, you should be safe against this particular threat. One interesting tidbit about this particular APT threat is it's not that advanced, or it doesn't seem to be. It doesn't really use zero-day threats in its attack. It doesn't seem to be using a very detailed or advanced rootkit technology to hide. It's very similar to the same criminal malware you see. The only difference is who it's targeting with the spear phishing emails and what kind of data it's looking for. When it infects its victims, it looks for a lot of documents that might contain intellectual property. And it also looks for things like CAD files and other manufacturing files as well. And according to Kaspersky's report, it uh, seems to be focusing on any documents that have, might have to do with nuclear technology, any sort of scientific technology, nanotechnology, oil industry stuff. Obviously, intellectual property that you know, one might assume one nation state wants to steal from another nation state. So it really is very similar to many of the APT attacks out there. If you want a lot of interesting detailed information about this, including some assembly level malware analysis, I recommend you check out Kaspersky's report. Now the good news is you're protected against this if you use modern AV and you keep it up to date. We partner with Kaspersky and another AV partner called AVG and we have signatures for this particular threat and many others. So if you use our products, you're, you're protected. So an interesting new nation state attack, but really not the end of the world. 
So that's all for this week, folks. I hope you found it useful. By the way, there's a number of other interesting security stories, such as a big uh, cyber forum takedown, malicious cyber forum takedown, and also a story about the NSA gathering tons of data from US phone carriers. So be sure to check out the blog post associated with this video, which we put on WatchGuard Security Center. And of course, if you're not following WatchGuard Security Center, you should, because I post a lot of stories throughout the month and week uh, besides this video. So make sure to check it out. Besides that, you can also follow me personally on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Or if you want, you can follow my company at WatchGuard Tech. As always, thank you for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.